Greetings YouTube and Merry Christmas one and all. Well, it's the 21st, so we're, the days are getting longer now. We're just one day past the solstice, it looks like. And at noon, I have just a tiny little bit of shading on that panel, which is just the way it is this time of year. So it looks like it's gonna it sets right there. So from right there, pretty low in the sky. And that's all right because this time of year, what I do is I run the generator. I needed to do laundry this morning, so I ran it for two whole hours. Well, that had the batteries up at 98%. And there's plenty enough solar to uh, finish off the charge, go through its absorb slash acceptance mode and come to a full charge. And if I hadn't had any sun except for gray sky, what I would have done is I would have run the generator two and a half hours. And then the four or five amps that I can make during the day is just enough to get my absorb time in but from what i understand uh, uh shout out to roy amberg amberg renewable energy uh, he's telling me that the mppt will really outperform in low light conditions so when i'm getting um, four or five amps in gray skies i get zero when there's a storm given but when it's just overcast and cloudy and you can't tell where the sun is, I get four or five amps. Well, an MPPT will really increase that amount. And from what I've read, in low light conditions in the Pacific Northwest, they outperform a PWM by 30%. But in Arizona, in direct sunlight where it's hot, it could be anywhere from zero to 10% and outperforming uh, PWM. So. Here's really where I need one, the Pacific Northwest. So folks have talked me into it. I think I'm going to do that. And the question is now, which charge controller do I want to get that will handle my solar array increase that we're going to do? And I'm kind of thinking that what I want to do is stay with a TriStar. Uh, it's made in America and it has no moving parts. There's no fan. It has a giant heat sink. And I like that. I like the one that I have. So I may just get a 60 amp um, TriStar MPPT. And I'll have to calculate out how much more solar I can add. So the question is, do I stick with the solar panels that I have so that the VMP will match, which is what you're supposed to do, or do I go ahead and run two charge controllers and uh, have the second array, uh, you maybe get the 225 watt panels and, and get away from these 100 watt panels. Because I can buy the 225s a lot cheaper per watt, but they do have a different VMP. And I just realized that this camera is shaking all the time because of the tremor in my right hand. So I'll, I'll see if I can get rid of that tremor for you with the uh, little button that they give you to stabilize things. I have it on on the phone, so that's the best I can do from here. At any rate, uh, I'm thinking about increasing the solar, and I really don't want to go up that high. So I think maybe it's because it's a lot of work, and I just don't feel like it. So I'm thinking about putting the solar along this fence, maybe up on uh, posts, so that I can walk under the panels and maybe put 10, 225 watt to whatever watts they make. They make more than that. I saw some 255s that were a good price. Stick with monocrystalline and add another 10 panels right here. And that will help my afternoon sun because in the wintertime it's the afternoon that I I need the sun. On a normal day, if it's calling for sunny, because I'm up on the mountain, the fog comes up off the valley floor and it keeps us in the fog bank 
and it burns off about three o'clock just in time for the sun to set and i'm not kidding you that's what it's like most days when it's not storming you have occasional gap like we have today where we were storming yesterday and we will be tomorrow but you know had a little wind come in and push the clouds out early so that's a happy thing but that's very rare so really i don't need uh the panels to get the early morning light because it's just foggy anyway so tell me what you think tell me what you think about charge controllers and if anybody's got any experience in the pacific northwest running the two different kinds the mppt and the pwm the pulse width modulation uh, how is it working for you in the cloudy skies do you have any history with using a pwm uh, in gray sky conditions and then switching to an mppt and noticing a marked change that's what i'd like to know because they're quite more expensive uh, i can get another tristar for 205 dollars and I can slave it off the one I have with a data cable, and then I only need one meter, uh, digital meter, which I have, and I can add as many of those as I want. But if I go to uh, an MPPT, I'm gonna have to do something completely different, possibly get two, because I may have more solar than the 60 amp MPPT will handle. So I am a 24 volt system. Originally, I thought of going, when I was at 12 volts, I was looking, staring right at having to get a Flex Max 80. It was the only one that would handle, you know, a, a larger than a thousand watt array at 12 volts. Abandoned that idea, went to 24 volts. And now I'm thinking if I ever do this again, I'm obviously going to go to 48. But we started out with 610 watts and went off grid with it. We've been growing the system ever since. And we do not have a power bill, or a heating bill, or a water bill, or a septic bill, or a phone bill. But I do have an internet bill, or you wouldn't be watching this. All right, folks, Merry Christmas. Have a very blessed day.